So The Daily Show did a segment where they talked about third-party candidates for the presidential race. And unlike back in the day when Jon Stewart still hosted the show, it wasn't informative, nor was it actually funny. And they just outright spread false information about Jill Stein. So I was really taken aback by this because you would think that knowing how disliked Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump are, that Americans, they're yearning for a third and fourth option. So to kind of shit all over that, I mean, even though it's a comedy bit, I, I, I took a lot of issues with it. So I can't actually play the clip, but I will link to it in the description box. Uh, but I'll try to walk you through what they talked about and where specifically I had issues with them. So to give you guys the setup, he talked about how voters are very dissatisfied with having to choose between Hillary and Donald Trump, but then handed it off to the correspondents. So basically, each correspondent would claim to support either Gary Johnson or Jill Stein, and then Trevor Noah would come in as the pragmatist and the voice of reason and tell them why that was a dumb decision. So it started with Hassan Minaj, who represented the ridiculous Gary Johnson supporter, according to them and to shoot down the idea of Gary Johnson it basically came down to them fear-mongering about him because he likes to smoke pot. Now it was a comedy bit again and they were only poking fun at him but there wasn't any substance there. Now when it came to Jill Stein that's where it really took a turn for the worse. So the female correspondent made her pitch about Jill Stein and said how she wants to move us to 100% clean renewable energy and cancel all student debt. That was great. One joke however it made me cringe. So they said that uh, Jill Stein was so progressive it would be as if Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders had sex and someone watched it and that person would be Dr. Jill Stein. Oh, that was that was really stupid. Now, Hassan Minaj chimed in and said, how could you support a candidate that's skeptical about vaccines? And they also decided to use what she said about Wi-Fi against her as well. Now, to be fair, the correspondent claiming to be a Jill Stein supporter said that she was only asking for more research. So let's go ahead and stop right there. So to say that Jill Stein is skeptical of vaccines is a complete and utter misrepresentation of her position. Look, let me be clear here. If Jill Stein was an anti-vaxxer, I would not support her. I would not vote for her. I would just write in Bernie Sanders because I'm someone who is of the opinion that vaccines should be mandatory because even though it's the case that I am in favor of personal and individual liberty, you don't have the liberty to create public health crises because you're ignorant of science. So I would not support Jill Stein given the potential policy implications that she'd have as an anti-vaxxer. Jill Stein is not skeptical of vaccines, nor is she an anti-vaxxer. Snopes cleared this up. And Dr. Jill Stein herself cleared this up. Take a look. You seem to support vaccines, yet you're evasive about your schedule or the support of the schedule. So I just wanted you to clarify that for me. So that statement about the schedule was taken out of context. So when I was practicing um, and following issues around immunization, which I am not now, um, there were concerns at the time about the mercury dose in vaccines and how kids might be loaded up in a way uh, related to that schedule and the presence of thimerosal in the vaccines. And that's what I was referring to, that there were legitimate questions at that time. But I understand those, you know, the thimerosal has been taken out of the vaccines, anything that would be given to a child, and it's no longer an issue. I think there's kind of an effort to divert the conversation from our actual agenda because the, the idea that I oppose vaccines is completely ridiculous. So now getting to the Wi-Fi portion, do I agree with her views about Wi-Fi? No, I don't. So I don't have to defend her on that issue because I don't agree with her there. But I never agree with any candidate 100% of the time. But if I'm just being frank here, who gives a fuck what she said about Wi-Fi? I mean, I can't think of any feasible policy positions you could extrapolate from that that would be damaging. Is she proposing to ban Wi-Fi? No, she's not. So I don't understand how this is something that would deter me from voting for her if it's effectively harmless, right? I mean, what she's proposing basically is more research when it comes to Wi-Fi. Um, I personally think that maybe we could use the funds elsewhere to study other things, but I mean, this isn't really damaging. She's not gonna ban Wi-Fi. It's something that's a relatively benign statement. So I don't really care what she had to say about Wi-Fi. I care about the policies that matter, like her Green New Deal, where she wants to get us on totally renewable energy by 2030. Now, here's the thing. I don't necessarily take issue with that part 
so much as I do the next part. So there was a portion where they basically said that since third party candidates have zero chance of winning, you shouldn't support them. So they said, we live in a two party system. Voting for Jill Stein is like throwing pennies in a wishing well. It's fun to say what you wish for, but that doesn't mean that it's going to come true. Look, and this is an effective argument that many people like to use against third party candidates. They say, Mike, we live in a two-party system. Voting for a third party will do nothing. Look up Duverger's law. We have a majoritarian electoral system, so they're never going to get elected. So why vote for them? Well, this is my response. I know about Duverger's law. I also know that we've come a long way in political science research since Maurice Duverger. So is it the case that the electoral system has the biggest impact on the effective number of political parties that a country has? Absolutely. However... It's also the case that there are other factors that influence the number of political parties in a country, such as political cleavages. So if you have a lot of societal divisions in a country, if you have a lot of polarization, that could potentially spawn third and fourth parties in spite of the fact that you have a majoritarian system. There's also local parties that pop up, so you have to look at whether or not a country is a federalist or a unitary state. So there's many factors. Also, it's not impossible for a third party candidate to win. There are no barriers preventing that when it comes to the law. It's just highly improbable. However, that doesn't mean that your vote counts for nothing. See, third party candidates serve as a crucial form of political opposition to the larger political parties. So even if you live in a two party system, you want these third parties to exist Otherwise, those two dominant parties, the duopoly that we see, they get really out of touch. They move away from voters. They disenfranchise voters. And so you have these third parties that really keep them in check and bring them back to where the base truly is. So as the Democratic Party, for example, moves further and further to the right and disenfranchises more and more voters, well, the Green Party's vote share will continue to grow and act as a very important check on democratic tyranny. So in a democracy... You need political opposition parties to prevent the two large parties from doing anything they want to. Now look, with that being said, your vote for a third party candidate is, in fact, more consequential in swing states. And you have to be cognizant about that as a responsible voter and decide whether or not you care more about defeating Trump or voting against Hillary Clinton. I don't have to make that decision as someone who lives in a deep blue state. But to say to people that their vote for a third party candidate is meaningless... I think that's a really dangerous statement. And think about this, if you're making the case against the existence of third parties, if you want them to go away, well then you're literally arguing against democracy, because part of democracy is about political opposition. If people feel as though they're not represented by the two main parties, competition pops up and people gravitate towards that competition. If one of those big parties fails, uh, like the Republican Party, they are headed for failure. They're, the cliff is dead ahead. So it is possible that either the Green or the Libertarian Party could take their place. And also, when you take into account the fact that America has one of the lowest voter turnout rates of any modern industrialized country, I get really nervous when people start spreading the idea that your vote doesn't matter or that you shouldn't support the candidate that you want to. So here's my question to you. Would you just prefer that they stayed home and not vote? Because they don't like Hillary Clinton. They don't want to support Hillary Clinton. And to some people, the only alternative is to just stay home. Like for me personally, if Jill Stein didn't exist, that wouldn't mean that I would just automatically support Hillary Clinton. I would probably just write in Bernie Sanders and protest. So are you truly telling us that we should just stay home rather than support a third party candidate? Is that really what you're saying? Because it sounds like it. But really what you want is for us to support the candidate of your choice that you support. And furthermore, if you really want Donald Trump to be defeated, then you should be happy about the existence of Jill Stein. Because if you really are trying to put up this dichotomy of either a Republican or Democratic candidate and there are no other options, if they really don't like Hillary Clinton, doesn't that increase the chances that they might go to Donald Trump? So Jill Stein is kind of a buffer that stops them from going to Donald Trump, right? Because, I mean, if we're protesting against Hillary Clinton, then wouldn't some people just vote for Donald Trump out of protest? So look, I mean, the argument is bullshit, and The Daily Show has really gotten out of touch. What you want to do if you want to be successful, Trevor Noah, and not go the way of the dodo like Larry Wilmore's show went, you actually have to tap into your millennial base. They don't like Hillary Clinton. They like Jill Stein. So you can cover Hillary Clinton. You can cover Jill Stein. But if you think that moving towards a more establishment pro-Clinton media is going to be what's going to get you more viewers, 
It's not. You'll go down very quickly. And this is one of the reasons why I wanted Jessica Williams to become the host, because I feel like she actually understands what young Americans want and care about. She has the comedy. She also has the smarts. This show was a great resource for political commentary for many young people. So the fact that they kind of decided to criticize Jill Stein in a manner that just misrepresents her positions, it's saddening to me.